The Stone Age is one of the most mysterious periods of human history. We've all seen Hollywood's take on what life was like back then. But what was a typical day like for cavemen? What did they eat? Did they wear clothes? And how did they spend their free time? Join us as we answer these questions and more in today's video. We don't have many historical records to go off of when imagining what life was like for our prehistoric ancestors. Most of what we know about the Stone Age comes from archaeological evidence like fossils, stone tools, cave paintings and more. These sources help us form a picture of what life was like back then. But there are still many unanswered questions. The lack of written records means that we can only speculate on things like religion, culture and daily life. That said, historians and archaeologists have put together a pretty good idea of what life was like for early humans based on the available evidence. Let's start with what cavemen probably ate. Depending on the time period you're referring to and the region of the world, the diet of cave people varied. However, most likely ate a combination of meat and plants. Some sources suggest that plants made up the majority of their diet, but others argue that meat was more important. The truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Meat was a big part of the diet for many Stone Age people, but they didn't just eat meat. They also gathered berries, fruits, nuts and other plants. Other. The type of food available would have depended on the season and the location. For example, in North America, some groups ate shellfish, while others hunted large game like bison. In Europe, the diet consisted mainly of wild plants, fruits, nuts, and sometimes fish or small animals. In Africa, where the first humans evolved, the diet was probably similar to that of modern-day tribes who eat a variety of plants and animals. Most likely food was gathered and prepared by women while men went out to hunt. This isn't just a guess, it's backed up by evidence from all over the world. For example, in France, Spain and Italy, archaeologists have found evidence that women were responsible for collecting shellfish and preparing them for eating. Men were more likely to go out and hunt animals, but sometimes they stayed close to the camp to protect it while women were out gathering food. Women probably took care of the children, while men did most of the heavy lifting and built things like shelters. But this wasn't always the case. Some groups were more egalitarian than others, and both men and women participated equally in all tasks. The way people lived would have also depended on the time period. During the Lower Paleolithic, which lasted from 2.6 million to 30,000 years ago, humans lived in small groups and moved from place to place following the food supply. They didn't have any permanent settlements and probably spent most of their time outdoors. During the Middle Paleolithic, which lasted from 30,000 to 12,000 years ago, humans started to stay in one place for longer periods of time and they began to build more permanent structures like huts or caves. During the Upper Paleolithic, which lasted from 12,000 to 8,000 years ago, humans started living in larger groups and building more complex structures like villages. Clothing was another important part of life for cavemen. Again, there's no one answer that will fit everyone since clothing would have been determined by things like climate, availability of resources and personal preference. Generally speaking though, people probably wore animal skins and maybe even plant fibers depending on where they lived. In colder climates, people probably wore more clothes while those in warmer climates wore less. Some researchers believe that people in warmer climates didn't wear any clothes at all. However, there's evidence that people all over the world wore some kind of clothing even if it was just a simple loincloth or necklace. Some people say that cavemen didn't wear clothes because they didn't have the technology to make them. However, this isn't true. Evidence has shown that people in the Stone Age knew how to sew and they used bones or teeth as needles. They also knew how to tan animal skins so they could use them as clothing. Clothing served several purposes. Of course, it helped people stay warm in cold weather, but it also protected them from insects and other animals. Clothing also helped identify members of the same group and showed social status. For example, the leader of the group might have worn different clothes than the other men or women. Another common misconception is that cavemen lived in caves. While some groups did live in caves, most likely built their own shelters using natural materials like rocks and branches. They might have also used caves as shelters when the weather was bad, or they could be hiding from predators, Caves weren't always safe places to live since they were often wet and dark and sometimes dangerous animals made their homes in caves. Despite this, 
They were probably better than trying to build a shelter in the open. Building a shelter would have been a group effort with everyone pitching in to help. The oldest known huts date back about 1.5 million years and were probably built by Homo erectus. These huts were made of sticks and leaves and were probably used for protection from the elements and predators. Later, people started building more permanent structures like stone houses and some even had furniture. Did cavemen have beds to sleep on? Probably not. Instead, they probably slept on the ground with a blanket or animal skin for warmth. If they were lucky, they might have had a pile of leaves or branches to make a soft bed. But most likely sleeping was uncomfortable. Speaking of discomfort, what about bathrooms? Did caveman have indoor plumbing? No, they didn't have indoor plumbing or running water. They probably just went wherever they wanted to go. There weren't any toilets back then. Maybe they used a hole in the ground or a rock to sit on. No TP either. So I guess they just used a stick or maybe a leaf. So what did cavemen do for fun? What kinds of games did they play? Unfortunately, we don't have much evidence about the hobbies and entertainment of cave people. However, we do know that they enjoyed music and they probably sang and danced for fun. They also made jewelry and other decorations and they probably told stories and jokes. Cavemen also liked to draw and they created some amazing works of art on the walls of caves. Some of the oldest known cave paintings date back 40,000 years and show animals like horses, deer and bison. Other paintings show geometric patterns and abstract designs. They also love to play with dolls and action figures. Well, maybe not exactly like ours, but they had figurines that they probably used for pretend play. For example, the Venus of Willendorf is a small figurine that may have been used as a fertility doll. The Venus of Willendorf is one of the most famous artifacts from the Stone Age and is thought to be between 25,000 and 30,000 years old. It was found in Austria and is about 11.1 cm tall. The figurine is very detailed and shows a woman with exaggerated breasts and belly, which suggests that she was meant to represent fertility. Cavemen also enjoyed board games, and they played a game called Mancala, which is still popular today in some parts of the world. They also played other games using sticks and stones, and they kept themselves entertained by watching animals and birds. As the Stone Age came to an end, people started to develop more advanced tools and weapons. They also started to farm and raise animals, which led to the development of villages and eventually cities. As society became more complex, life for the average person changed dramatically. It's important to remember that the Stone Age lasted for millions of years and that different groups of people lived in different parts of the world so there was no one typical day for all cavemen. Their daily lives would have varied depending on where they lived, what time period they were in, and their particular circumstances. What do you think? How would you like to have lived as a caveman? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to like and share this video if you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. Thanks. What does it mean to be human? Our brains are capable of coming up with some truly innovative things, but we also experience some of the same basic needs as other animals. We all need to eat, sleep, and reproduce. And in our day-to-day -day lives, we do things that may seem so routine they're almost boring, like brushing our teeth or driving to work. But if we go back far enough, these routines would have looked very different for our ancestors. So let's take a trip back in time and look at what an average day in the life of an ancient human might have been like. For the sake of this video, I'm going to use Homo sapiens, which is the scientific name for modern humans. But keep in mind, there were plenty of other hominids living on Earth at the same time, including Neanderthals and Homo erectus. Our story begins at sunrise in what is now South Africa. Our Homo sapiens protagonist wakes up after a night spent sleeping alongside his family group. These early humans were probably still fairly nomadic, meaning they didn't stay in one place for too long. Instead, they followed the herds of animals they hunted and the plants they gathered for food. So there isn't really a house for our protagonist to wake up in, per se. Maybe he slept under a temporary shelter made of branches and leaves or snuggled up around a fire with his kin. Either way, he's glad to be getting some shut-eye because last night was rough. A pride of hyenas was nearby and the sound of their wails kept him up. They're dangerous predators and scavengers, and if they can smell blood, they will come after you. Luckily, his group had driven them off, but it was a close call. 
In the morning, the group will probably move on from this area. There's nothing to see here anymore. They already pillaged the bushes for edible plants and the watering hole for aquatic vegetation yesterday. The meat from their latest kill is getting a little old, and they need to find something fresh to eat. Plus, there's always the chance there will be more hyenas around. As he stretches out his stiff muscles, the sun climbing higher in the sky, our protagonist is thinking about food. His stomach is growling, reminding him that they'll need to hunt soon. It's been two days since they caught anything, and they need protein to survive. Lucky for them, there's a herd of antelope not too far away. It takes only seconds for the entire family group to get ready. There's no need to make weapons like spears from sharpened stones and wood. This is the era when humans started making and using tools, but most of the ones from this time period are just sharp rocks that can be used to cut and stab. Not exactly handy when you're trying to chase down fast prey like antelope. Instead, our protagonist relies on something much more primal, running with the herd until they get tired and separated from the pack. By working together and chasing the antelope over long distances, eventually they tire themselves out and fall victim to the unforgiving terrain. Then it's easy prey for the humans. One of the older members of the group, perhaps the mother of the protagonist, spots a small babe struggling to stand up. It's too young to run with the herd. If they catch it now, they will get a nice meal for the whole camp. Our protagonist nods in agreement. It's a good shot. This could help the group last another day without needing to find new hunting grounds. After the successful hunt, the group moves on once again. Our protagonist feels accomplished. Now it's time to find a new campsite for the night. He keeps an eye out for tall trees. He knows that if they're attacked by leopards, having high trees around will give him somewhere to climb. Leopards weren't native to Africa at this point, but they would evolve from smaller wildcats and become fierce predators that hunted alongside lions, cheetahs and hyenas. Their stealth and agility made them extremely deadly. But if you could scramble up a tree, you were safe. So the presence of trees was a good thing. After walking for hours, they finally spot a clearing with tall trees surrounding it. They set up camp here. When there are men around, women and children will forage for plants, nuts and berries, while the men do other important work, namely keeping watch for danger. This means that while our protagonist is catching fish, a task he enjoys because it makes him feel clever and strong, he's always looking over his shoulder to make sure they aren't being stalked. Just before sunset, he sees a large male leopard slink away into the foliage. It must have been stalking the women and children. Our protagonist grabs a spear and runs over to help. Too late. The leopard lunges and swipes at him, but our protagonist is prepared. He jabs at the big cat trying to hit its soft underbelly. The leopard howls in pain. It got jabbed and now there's blood in the water. Our protagonist and his group chase it away, but not before the leopard manages to scratch up our protagonist's leg. Blood pours out of the wound and he can feel himself getting woozy. If he doesn't get this cleaned and bandaged, it could get infected and turn into a serious problem. Luckily, the women know just what to do. They wash his wounds and cover it in dirt and leaves. It's the best they can do to prevent infection while they're traveling. Bandages and antibiotics will have to wait until modern medicine. When the wound is cleaned, our protagonist joins the others around the fire. Someone has started a small blaze and they gather around it, eating their fish, telling stories and staying warm. The night is filled with the sounds of crickets and the occasional hoot of an owl. They've managed to scare away any potential predators with their fire, but this also gives the humans a sense of security. Sitting around the fire is a good way to keep busy. During the day, there wasn't much else to do besides travel, forage or hunt. But at night, there were plenty of ways to entertain oneself. Telling stories is one way to pass the time. Another is playing games. Researchers believe that early humans played a game similar to hide-and-seek. The younger members of the group would dart and weave around their campsite, hiding behind rocks and logs, while the adults called out to them. Sometimes they would play a kind of tag where one person would try to catch another while both ran and hid in the brush. At other times, they engaged in mock fights, pretending to attack each other with wooden clubs or sharp sticks. As the night wears on, it's time for bed. Our protagonist lays down on a patch of soft grass and looks up at the stars. He knows that one day his group will settle down in one place for longer than others and build a shelter out of stone and wood. They will no longer be nomads. 
but tonight beneath the African sky, he sleeps soundly, knowing that tomorrow will bring a new day and new adventures. He dreams of hunting great beasts and catching slippery fish. He feels accomplished and strong, knowing that he is a hunter, gatherer, storyteller and friend. He is a human. The truth is, we don't know a lot about what the daily life of an ancient human was actually like. We don't have many records of this time in history. What we do know comes from archaeological evidence like old tools, bones from butchered animals, cave paintings and occasionally fossils. But this is mostly speculation based on what we have found and comparing our own behavior to that of other primates. Life for ancient humans was difficult. They faced harsh weather, starvation and predators, but they were highly adaptable. They came up with ingenious solutions to the problems they encountered, like inventing new tools or working together to hunt bigger prey. Most importantly, they survived. That's why we're here today. Because of our ancestors' ability to adapt and overcome, we can explore what daily life was like for them through the ages. If you want to learn more about life as an ancient human, check out our series on the Stone Age. You'll learn about everything from the development of language to the domestication of plants and animals. Click or tap the screen to keep watching. Thanks for watching.